Vice President Yemi Oshibajo calls for a replacement of state of origin with certificate of residence as he calls for social cohesion and unity in Nigeria. Also, Rep's panel summons Abubakar Malami and Zainab Ahmed over alleged payment of $200 million to consultants and they threaten arrest. Well, this is Plus Politics. I'm Mary Annako. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo has called for strong consensus among elites, urging the implementation of a policy framework that will promote social cohesion and unity in Nigeria. Now, regarding the settlers and indigents dichotomy, the Vice President called for replacing the certificate of indigents with a certificate of residence or birth insisting that such a move would promote cohesion. Mr. Sibajo also called for a stronger and more equitable justice that will treat all Nigerians equally, regardless of tribal, religious or ethnic affiliations. The vice president also called on the media to de-emphasize issues that promote ethnic and religious profiling and urged them to report news that would unite Nigerians. Well, here we are discussing this tonight. Uh, joining us is Shegun Shopitan. He is a political analyst and Ade Atobatele. He is a public affairs analyst. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, gentlemen. Mr. Atobatele, I'm going to get this name right before the night is over. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks for having me. Great. Um, I'll start with you, Mr. Tobatele. Interestingly, this is not the first time that this issue has been raised. Uh, it, it probably has come in a different you know, type or shadow, but this is not the first time uh, that this kind of call has been made. So what makes this difference and why should we pay attention? I don't think there's any difference. Um, this, however, is coming from the vice president of this time, so we're listening. Um, he is known to um, not be trivial if he's, if he's saying. And um, I was, before the show, I was actually asking myself, uh, what does a certificate of residence mean? Well, it's, it's a purely administrative tool. It says, I am here, I pay tax, and all the things that tax entitle me to, I should be able to get. It doesn't say that the bones of my ancestors are under my feet. That would be a certificate of ancestors. Um, it doesn't say you were born there. That would be a certificate of birth. A certificate of residence is a purely administrative tool that says I am a socially responsible citizen and as a consequence, I am entitled to all the things that, um, and, and that entail to me by doing that. Saying that it's just a mere administrative document what exactly does it change? Because if the president is saying that this, uh, the vice president, I beg your pardon, is saying that this will, one way or the other, foster some level of cohesion, how does that happen? I'm not too sure about um, the vice president is my senior, um, so I'm not going to um, say that he's wrong, but I'm not too sure that cohesion is what um, certificate of residency would give me. Um, for example, I could have a certificate of residency in Imo State this year and have a different one in the in, in Zamfara the next year because I was paying tax in Imo State this year, but to this next year I've moved to Zamfara, which is a, which is not just around the corner, and now I'm paying tax in Zamfara because I'm now resident there. Um, that doesn't say anything about cohesion. It says about administrative entitlement. Uh, Sh Sh Shagun, how does this translate to the attitude of the average Nigerian to his fellow Nigerian? For example, um, if I meet you and you tell me your name is Shagun, for example, Shagun is known obviously as someone from the south, south, southwest. But if you tell me your name is, for example, um, let's say um, Duke, it's very difficult, and so I'll ask you, where exactly are you from? Duke is almost an English name. Um, of course, we always want to know exactly where people are from. So what does this whole 
statement or strategy that the vice president is pitching, how does this change the way we relate with one another, especially when it comes to ethnicity and indigenship? You know, uh, I think of that. First of all, um, it's a good thing that the vice president is thinking along these lines. Um, he has shown himself to be a man over the eight years of this administration, to be a man that um, seems to understand what the fundamental issues are. And unlike many of his colleagues, uh, he's, on, he's not afraid to, to speak at those issues. Um, so not minding the fact that he's vice president, you know. So I think it's a good thing that he's, he's talking in this direction, but, but I don't think that what, he, he, what he's um, talking about is the solution to the problem that he's trying to address. Uh, the problem, like you said, the problem is, you know, one of social cohesion. It's one of um, um, interaction uh, between citizens of the country that is devoid of those um, traditional fault lines that we have. Um, usually, and there are usually two major fault lines, and that's the origin and the religion. Um, and you find that, look, all in all, in the overall, the average Nigerian really does not have any issues with his fellow citizen on the basis of where they're from. These things always come into play, um, typically when it's political season, usually around elections. And then there are some other um, issues, regardless of electionary period or not, where indigenship versus um, um, residency might come into play. For example, when you talk about catchment areas, quota systems, and all of that, maybe in the administration of uh, bursaries, uh, uh, scholarship awards, and stuff like that. Now, um, my view is that these things will pale into insignificance if once our political um, leadership delivers good governance across board. Regardless of where you live, if you have a regular and steady power supply, regardless of where you live, if you can ply good roads, regardless of where you live, if you can control your your movement from your re your house, your commute to work, for example, if if it's controlled and um, you know it's, it's it's bereft of disruptions that we currently exist um, experience because of bad roads and terrible traffic. Regardless of where you live, you get good quality healthcare that is affordable. Then I tell you that most Nigerians, these issues will disappear. Let's not forget that anywhere in the world, you know, and you can check this. Anywhere in the world, whether you're talking about the United States of America, whether you're talking about the United Kingdom, you know, if you go to Germany or France, um, you know, South Africa, the, the issues of originship really don't ever truly disappear. And in any conversation, social interaction, you know, between um, citizens of those countries, they still ask themselves, oh, where are you from? You know, so if you go to the United States, you see two people, they're Caucasians. They still ask each other, where are you from? And somebody will say, oh, I'm originally from California, but I now live in Florida, you know? And, and, and that, it, it's normal, you know? So it doesn't really uh, present a problem because they're not uh, dealing with fundamental existential problems, you know? So our problems really here is because governance is missing in action and uh, invariably every four years, this this differences so-called differences are played up deliberately and it becomes a problem so for me whilst it's a good thing that the president the vice president has talked about this thing i don't think a certificate like my dear brother has said i don't think a certificate is the solution to this to be honest maybe it might address some um uh, administrative issues for example talking about catchment area so if i've lived in a place for 20 years well yes i should and i paid taxes there for 20 years or say 10 years or whatever benchmark or threshold they want to set, then I should be able to benefit some resources from that area as well. So maybe a certificate of residency will take care of that. But I, it, it does not in any way deal with the social cohesion issue that the vice president is talking about. So I think we need to think more deeply about this and um, come up with um, a, 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 bit, a more coherent um, solution to, 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 to it. Uh, Mr. Tabatale, I'm going to come back to you. Many have fought this idea in the past, um, even, like I said, um, 
several other people have brought it up, maybe uh, because they were not vice presidents, maybe that's why people fought it. But then, of course, um, there are people who talk about the fact that, hey, um, this thing could affect us as aboriginals or, um, you know, as the owners of the land, uh, the, as per our ancestry, you know, and, and some of them are saying this is a threat to our cultural backgrounds. Um, what is your thought on this particular position? In 2020, to the Household Survey. The Household Survey says that, and this can be looked up online, that Lagos State consists of over 85% Yoruba households. It puts the Igbos at 3% and the Hausas at just under 1%, and all the rest were other tribes. Nobody, it would be, it's, it's almost fantastical to say that you could ship a, a, a massive set of people from one place to another to take over anywhere. It doesn't work like that. However, the concept of catchment area is real. We want to be we want to be managed by people who understand our pain. And so if there is a aggregation of people that look like us, as the Yoruba would say, anything else would do um, those are the people that I want to manage my pain. That doesn't say that I'm exclusive. And that doesn't say that, I, on the other hand, that I want to take over from you. It just says that I understand. Um, if you're a senator, you want to be a senator in New York, for example, you have to live there for X, X number of years. Why? You need to understand their pain. You have to be part of them. That doesn't mean that you were born there. That doesn't mean that your ancestors' bones were there. 200 years ago, it means that you're part of the community. So, as I said, the, uh, the uh, question of cohesion is a question of people actually integrating themselves into society. If you take a train from Toronto to Vancouver, the train takes about three days to do it. You will come across several provinces. And as you walk, as you go across those provinces, you will find settlements of all sorts of European people that came there, that aggregated in a particular town or whatever. They want to be together. Human beings want to be together. Um, a certificate of a residency just says that I may not be part of that original collective, but I'm part of you because I paid what is needed to pay from an administrative point of, point of view. And as a consequence, legally, I have those rights. It has nothing to do with cohesion. It just says, you cannot deny me because I'm different. You cannot deny me because I have only one leg. You cannot deny me because I have pink hair. You cannot deny me for all sorts of reasons that I'm not just ethnic. Because I am a, I am a paid up citizen of this community. I am part of this community. Ancestry is a completely different thing, as is ethnicity. I want to talk about, you know, the important of unity and cohesion in our country right now because um at this point of the country's existence we've seen i mean you obviously made mention a bit about what we experience here in lagos uh, just you know in the thick of the elections and the kinds uh, of messaging that you know we got from people that you would consider as um somewhat um let's say uh, people look up to um but then how important is it for us to have this conversation about cohesion, about unity, even though we see that politicians only throw it around when it's convenient? Uh, at, at other times, we, we, we really don't hear them say stuff like that. And then, of course, the vice president made mention of the fact that the media needs to um, be um, making sure that their programming is positive and talks about unity. Uh, but again, the media does have to report it when issues of hate like this ar arise. I mean, not reporting it does not in any way say that it's non-existent, does it? Politicians and religious, and religious people are adept at social engineering. We tend to forget that. They wouldn't be where they were unless they were very good at social engineering. And every four years from a politician's point of view, and every Friday or Sunday from a religious point of view, they try to put us where they want us to be. They are, they are preaching a message and they want us to follow. 
The question is, do we actually ask why they are doing this? Who is actually benefiting from the message that they are, they are, they are sending out? Because it is very, very easy to, to whip up sentiment, whether it be religious sentiment or whether it be ethnic sentiment. But the question is, who's benefiting from this? It tends not to be the people that you've whipped up. It tends to be, as I said, a religious person or a political person who is doing it for their own agenda, not the agenda of the masses. Is this particular strategy um, being pushed by Mr. Vice President capable of relegating or reducing the score of tribalism and ethnic divisions? And, and I want to know if we adopt it. I mean, it's just a piece of paper, but then it's a start of something. But let's talk about us, the people. Are, how ready are we to embrace um, the concept of unity, the concept of de-tribalization, the concept of being Nigerian first before being whatever else you want to be? As I said, I don't think... I, I, I'm sorry, that, that was for Shagun. Okay, okay so, so I, I don't think... I think that um, there is a major um, requirement for national development that uh, our governments, successive governments, have con continually missed out on um, since the days of the military. Um, the last time we had any kind of genuine national orientation campaign, you know, was in the days of uh, um, uh, uh, General Papangida, you know, in the Mansa days, and, and, and uh, what's the name of that agency there? Our national orientation agency has been practically moribund, uh, you know, since 1999. Uh, so this question that you raise, I think, has two elements, you know, unity, Unity would come from a sense of loyalty, a shared sense of loyalty to the national, uh, you know, question. You know, so I, I will feel a, a, a shared sense of brotherhood with my fellow Nigerian when I am proud of being a Nigerian. You know, so that is one aspect. The other aspect is so that, that will happen. You know, you'll be proud to be a Nigerian. You'll be loyal to your country when the country works for you. You know, and vice versa. So you work for your country, your country works for you in every way, in whatever manner, whatever way you want to talk about it. You know, so that's one element. The second element is that usually these things, you, you do have to craft them. You do have to be deliberate about programming how people think, you know, and, and what they're thinking about, how they're relating with these issues. And I think that's where the question of national orientation comes in. Mm. I thought that, yes, I thought that um, we missed the major opportunity in 2015 when, uh, uh, you know, uh, President Mohamed Buhari uh, became president because he came on, on a wave of, a general wave of um, acceptance and hope. And in that moment, if a, whatever positive messaging had come out of government, people would have accepted it. So I had advocated at that time, repeatedly, that the National Orientation Agency needed to be funded, needed to be um, significantly um, enabled in terms of capacity, you know, to, 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 to drive a messaging from government to the people regarding how they should see their country. Um, in the days of uh, President Goodluck Jonathan, you remember the Good People, Great Nation campaign that... Um, that was from, uh, the, uh, that was from the Information Ministry as opposed to the NOA. Yes, it yes, was pushed by yes, the I know. Ministry. You know so so that, that was an example of something that was attempted in a deliberate manner to, to, to craft an image for the country. And it's something like that that I'm talking about. So the National Orientation Agency needs to engage the services of professionals that would help craft a well thought through, well designed campaign that would drive the messaging of unity across board to Nigeria. So on the one hand, Nigeria is working for you and you're happy, you know, being a Nigerian. And then on the other hand, somebody is talking to you. So it's like a product and marketing of the product. So on the one hand, the product is a good product, it's working, Nigeria. On the other hand, somebody is now marketing that product to you and telling you how you should feel about the product. And the messaging is designed by professionals, mm. subliminal messaging, direct messaging, and all of that to guide 
how you feel and how you relate with your fellow citizens. I think, you know, we need to move more in, in that direction than talking about this administrative document, you know, called certificate of um, residency. The certificate of residency is a good idea, but it has to be well um, um, articulated to, to talk about what qualifies you to earn that certificate. How many years do I need to have lived? Is there a threshold of taxes that I need to have paid? You know, yeah. and so on and so forth. Uh, until those things are defined, then it's just an idea floating in the air. It's a good idea, but we need way more than that. Before I go to Mr. Uh, Atobatele, um, you, you make mention of the NOA. I'm one of those who's queried why the NOA um, has been so silent or almost non-existent in the past almost eight years. But then we did see a video surfacing of the, um, the DG of the NOA saying that other ministries, departments and agencies have taken advantage or taken over the job of the NOA and they are jostling for funds to do the job of the NOA as opposed to the NOA. And so he now has to go from one ministry to the other to say, this is our job. You shouldn't be doing this. And so again, it looks like it's more administrative, it's more of a, a political issue as opposed to these guys not doing their jobs. They told the truth. The truth is that he is not performing, he is leaving a vacuum, and that vacuum will be filled. Nature, by nature, abhors vacuums. So, anywhere that there is a vacuum, um, by nature, by natural process, air will rush in and take that space. So what is happening, you know, what he is experiencing is simply evidence that there is a desperate need for orientation. And since he is not doing his job, since he is extremely anonymous in the national space, you know, these ministries will have to do what they need to do with regards to their own effectiveness. Because a national campaign, national messaging regarding whatever ministry you want to talk about is critical. If the government is um, um, running infrastructure projects all over the country, one of the biggest weaknesses of this administration, we have said from the beginning, is the very poor messaging, you know, that comes out of, of, of the administration. The only thing you see is people that have turned themselves into attack dogs instead of simply educating and informing Nigerians. You know, so what the gentleman in the NOA is experiencing is nature simply doing its job of filling a vacuum that he has left. Okay. Back to you, Adi. Um Let's talk about indoctrinations and some of the conversations that we have on our breakfast tables or dinner tables in our homes. Um, you know, many pundits who have, you know, talked about this issue of national unity and cohesion uh, have said that Nigerians have been extremely indoctrinated, um, you know, uh, by these ethnic divis uh, div uh, divisionary sentiments. Like, over time, we've, be we've dug a huge divide between us and other tribes or indigents. And so it makes it very difficult for whatever messaging to get into, you know, the, the, the deep-seated fabrics of our society. But I want to ask you, where do we even start to deal with this issue of indoctrination? Because it is deep-seated, whether we like it or not, and it always finds a way to show up when we have very little issues. I think we're, we've, um, the black president came up with a statement, and the statement is very simple. This gives you residency. That's all it says. You didn't say anything about that. If you drive down the Ibadan Expressway and you get to the Shadamo Interchange and you turn left, you are going into an area that they call Egba. Those are the Abekuta people. If you turn right, however, you get into Remo. And the Remo people will tell you that they're not Ijebus. The Ijebus are further down the road, but they're all from Open State. So where do we start? Are we saying that we are promoting our tribe? Are we promoting our state? Or are we promoting our country? People, people are pack animals. They tend to want to gather with other people that look like them, that have their own, that, that, that feel the way they feel. That is not to say that they're not willing to um, accommodate other people, but they are first and foremost wanted to uh, um, be with people that look like them. During COVID, we found this out. You know, people that we thought were highly developed started fighting over resources. You know, the, the Americans were fighting with the, with the Germans and the French over 
of a COVID thing, of a COVID whatever. Men, meanwhile, they're all members of NATO. We thought they were above such things. But when it comes down to the nitty-gritty of it, we are pack animals. Now, the question is, is that a bad thing? I don't believe it is a bad thing. To have an identity doesn't mean that it's bad. It's only bad when you want to use it to exclude others. So when the Vice President says this is a certificate of residency, he says, look, I may not be, I may be a cat, and you might be a dog, but I'm entitled to have food, just like you're entitled to, because this is what I contributed to this society. That's all he's saying. He isn't, there's nothing, there's no ethnicity about it. But we're now talking about cohesion. And I'm saying that we should each promote ourselves and be, be, be comfortable in our own skin. Because if we can't be comfortable in our own skin, how are we going to promote ourselves as something that is unified? And the, the question really is, is that most times in our country, wherever we find ourselves, the minorities are, 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 are trodden down. We need to get past that. Whether the minorities are women, whether the minorities are an ethnic grouping, whether the minorities are a, a religious grouping, we need to learn to live with each other. The mm. civilian of residency doesn't do that, but orientation does do that. Mm. And, and, and talking about orientation, because you see, you made mention of something very important. Um, having an identity is not wrong. Um, appreciating our culture and where we're from is not a bad thing. Uh, but then, of course, when it's being used in a bad light, that's where the problem is. But are we capable of recognizing the difference and being able to flag it when somebody's trying to use it to divide us as opposed to uh, it being some form of unity? Organizations um, um, and, and similar organizations should come in. They should be everywhere. And if everybody that is promoting themselves do not need to promote to the exclusivity of others. And once we understand that, and we're, you know, for example, if there was a, a, a organization in Lagos State that um, promoted the different tribes that are in Lagos State as this is Lagos, that's not saying that anybody that comes to Lagos has to be one of those tribes, but it is recognizing that the people who live here, the people of the attachment areas, this is who they are. Wherever you go, if you go to New York, there is an Italian section. If you go, in fact, in Toronto, as I said before, there are more Italians living in Toronto than any other city outside um, Italy. There are a large community, same with the Greeks. We have a large Nigerian community in Atlanta. These people don't need to be assimilated. They need to be, they need, but they don't want their, their identity either to be lost. Why would we need to be lost? Why would identity need to be lost when I can, I can be um, part of the community and do what my civic duty is inside that community as a minimum, and acclimatize myself to the community as a next step. Um, in, in closing, Shergun, let me come to you because we're almost wrapping up. Um, with all that we've talked about today, because we've looked at the problem statement, we've looked at the problem in itself and we've addressed it, but let's talk solutions. Do we see this phasing out sometime soon in the nearest future? Um, do we see us embracing unity's, uh, unity in its entirety going forward, especially when it's about around election season? Well, so I, I have always thought that uh, there are certain things that you cannot legislate away. Um, so if you take this issue of ethnicity, you know, um, the, uh, you know, and, and other things like that, you find that in, in some places, for example, in Rwanda, you know, this, um, they, they went somewhere down this road where um, asking for a state of origin on any form become, became illegal. But, you know, I feel that such measures might be more plastic than real, might, might be um, uh, or plastic surgery, you know. Uh, window dressing and if any for any reason some of those divisions were to ever come up i suspect that you might find that the underlying issues still remain and some underlying resentments might still be there you know so i, I think that uh, it's not something that you can legislate away in terms of talking solutions for me there are two major solutions one is long term um, and the other is medium term. The long term one is Mr. Vice President, Mr. President, Mr. Governor, Mr. Senator, and the House of Reps member 
and all the other political office holders in Nigeria deliver in Nigeria that works to Nigerians, then you find that to a very large extent, they will not worry about where anybody is from. They will all love each other. The reason there's so much anger and hatred, apparent supposed hatred in the land is because the country is not working for the majority of Nigerians. You know, and then the second one, the short to medium term one, is the campaign, is the programming, uh, the messaging, you know, and all of that. And that's where the National Orientation Agency comes in. Okay. I, I think that the vice president will do well right. to speak, you know, to, to, to that issue as well. All right. I want to say thank you, gentlemen, for having this great conversation tonight. Uh, Sheku Shopitan is a political analyst and he's of ACT Network. And Ade Ato Batele is a public affairs analyst also. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. For having me. All right. And that's it. Uh, we'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing uh, the House of Representatives summon of the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Finance. Stay with us. <laughs>